This is East Carolina All-American Bryant Packard, and we're talking pirate baseball in the sports objective. You're watching Extra Innings, presented by PGXGloves.com on the Sports Objective. Join us every Sunday night on Facebook Live, our YouTube channel, and X, as we talk East Carolina baseball. We'll analyze the previous week while also taking a look at what lies ahead. Now, let's talk Pirate Baseball. Welcome in to Extra Innings, presented by PGXGloves.com. In fact, Bubba, I, I've been saying it, but I, I will tonight. I promise I'll get my gloves. In fact, um, my good my good buddy and my son Alexander started baseball on Saturday. McKenzie starts practice tomorrow, um, but uh, definitely have to go to pgxgloves.com. And they do still have those gloves. They're quality gloves, and uh, we Bubba and I can attest to it. The hats are great. Uh, they've got a great – and then I have a lot of friends of mine that are golfers. You can go in there and get your golfing glove at – pgxgloves.com and we appreciate mark minikazi in fact uh by the way bubba i want to give a shout out to mark um i actually have pictures of it and i'll put it up on facebook i'll send it to you uh, maybe we can put it on our pirates cove facebook page but i actually wore that hat to it's one of my favorite hats and i wore it to the sylvan heights bird park if you guys were closer uh to us then i would highly recommend that for you uh, for the family, but a great place. It's actually in Scotland Neck of all places, and we call that God's country, but um, S Sylvan Heights, very cool thing. And uh, people always, every time I uh, wear that hat, Bubba, I get a lot of good responses, and people are asking me about the logo, and they're asking me what the hat is. So it gives me a chance to, it's kind of like we always talk about marketing, just like you have the ECU hat on now. Uh, people obviously know what that brand is, but uh, I give a chance to tell them about pgxgloves.com. Yeah, I appreciate Mark Minikazi's support of the program and you know, transitioning over to the week that was for Pirate Baseball. You know, yeah. anytime you can go on the on the road and win three out of four right, against quality competition like we did against NC State and Florida Atlantic, and you got to be, you know, pleased with that. Uh, although there were definitely a lot of things to clean up, and uh, you commit more errors than you typically commit. Uh, five errors in the series back-to-back multi-error games but we found a way to still get it done and um and you know you you had a multi-error game against nc state I, although i think those errors you know came once the issue um once the, the game had largely been put out of reach and we went on to that 12 to 4 victory but uh yeah a quality week and a five game week ahead Hey Bubba, and the other thing is we uh, we talk about the we talked about the significance of this series on the road. Obviously, with FAU being conference, also picking up a great win, a first win in Raleigh. I I knew it'd been in a while, but two thousand and nine. I know some of that time we didn't play. There was a few years in there we didn't play, but uh, that's been a long time since we won in Raleigh and uh, twelve to four. A great night. I know you and Matt had a great uh, extra innings, extra if you will. Uh, for that uh, that victory right afterwards, and uh, just really excited for the program because now, yes, we could have won on Saturday. We'll talk about that in just a second. But a three and one week, we had four no last week, and then you have the next ten games. If I counted that right, uh, you're the numbers guy. I believe off the top of my head, there's ten straight home games. What a home stand that is! Then you go on the road, then you come back for another. Most of our games. My point is. For the rest of the season, our home. We've had to play a lot. We've been road warriors here early on, but the scheduling gods, I think, have been good to us. And uh, as long as we get um, stay injury free as much as possible, and we stay away uh, from um, making a lot of mistakes, free nineties, as Coach Godwin talks about, uh, we've got a good shot of uh, finishing strong, as they say. Yeah, and uh, you know, hey, knock on wood, you know, we've 
we've won uh, our last four midweek games. You know, we dropped those first two to Campbell and up at Old Dominion, a pair of one-run defeats, but uh, have played well in the midweek since, you know, for the most part. And, you know, and when we didn't play well down at UNC Wilmington, we found a way to get it done. You know, it really took care of business. Um, one of our most complete games of the season at Elon, uh, much the same at NC State, uh, winning 12-4. to 4. Uh, against the 19th ranked Wolfpack, and as you mentioned, you know that was the, the first win since 2009 in Raleigh. And you know there were several years where you didn't play. I think technically this is year 10 for Coach Godwin, but really, you know, because of COVID, uh, it's more like year nine. Uh, because I, I'm trying to remember if that year in 2020, if we were scheduled to pay the Wolfpack or not. But um, that might have been the year, not, the year that. Uh, I think that – wasn't that the year that we didn't – we were trying to get them on the schedule and we had a game. We were going to do like the Carolina thing. We were going to do a right. uh, game in Zebulon at um, a five-county stadium where the Mudcats are playing currently. I don't know how much longer. And we were going to do one in Raleigh and one in Greenville. Uh, it never happened, but I just thought that, that was uh, – I think yeah. off the top of my head it was something like that. I believe that was – I don't think it was 21. I think it was 2020 off the top of my head. Help me out for those of you that are listening or watching live right now. Yeah, it seems like you may be correct on that. Um, but Cliff Godwin, I believe, is now one in four um, in in Raleigh, and you know, like Carter Cunningham was mentioned earlier on on Hoist the Colors today um, with Stephen Igo, he was just saying that they were discussing as a team, and Coach Godwin referenced that um, you know earlier earlier on Tuesday afternoon about how. Um, we had not really played well at Doak Field, and Carter said that he and the guys were discussing that. And um, not only had we not won there, but um, had never really competed very well there. Um, but that certainly all changed on Tuesday, and you jumped ahead, and uh, you, you had Dixon Williams, and, you know, just being – I don't know this for a fact, but just I would say, you know, with all the talk about AMAC and obviously, you know, he's playing third base this year and starting for the Pirates in AMAC's former position and uh, all the talk going into this game, you know, just being human, you can't, uh, you know, help, but, you know, feel the impact of it a little bit. And uh, no doubt that uh, he, he stepped up in a, in a huge way and had a two hit game, had an unbelievable catch, uh, going back probably, what, 35 to 40 feet, if not more, in, in, into, into left field. Um, Bristol yeah, Carter, I true. believe it was. was uh, Coach Godwin said it was a sports center top 10. I was not aware of that. I, I knew that Bristol Carter's catch um, against UNC Wilmington was, but yeah. I was not aware that uh, Dixon Williams' catch against the Wolfpack was. But per CG23, it was. Okay. But, um, yeah, I but, yeah, we had – yeah, five Pirates with two hit games, uh, led by Carter Cunningham with three hits and a home run. J Dub had had a home run. You had um, JJC with a pair of hits, Star with a couple hits, and then uh, you also had Dixon Williams, as I already mentioned, with with two hits. So you know, you know, really played well offensively. You did it with the short game. You had extra base hits. Um, you know, we were kind of clicking on all cylinders on Tuesday night. No question about it. And you, you're right about that, Bubba, with the one thing that really irked me, and it's just they don't mean it that way, but uh, in fact, Evan, I believe he does games for us, but when they were talking, or there may have been one of the state player, one of them said that we're kind of like the little brother, you know, like they're making the reference, and it bothered me because I'm going – we are, uh, we are. When it comes to baseball and Olympic sports and football, especially, um, we can hang with uh, the Wolfpack all day long, and we can beat them. And so maybe they didn't mean anything by it, but I know there were some other people on social media that were not too happy about them saying that. But uh, I can't remember the exact quote that was said, but it was something along those lines, like, and but. In other words, they were trying to make it out in a nice way, saying it's like our Super Bowl. Yeah, we love playing NC State and all the rival rivalry games and in-state games, but it's not like that's the only game we're going to get up for. We have what my point is: we have a lot to play for, including 
We still have obviously a regional, super regional that we would like to host conference championship as far as regular season, the tournament, and of course, Omaha. So it's not like NC State is the only game we care about. And they may not have meant it that yeah. way, but that's the way I took it, maybe. Well, the, the ACC Network Extra and broadcasters, yeah. you know, one of whom is a former NC State player, and he said this is far and away the most fans that NC State has had at a game this year, and it probably will be um, the largest crowd of the season. So, And I'm pretty sure that much like the Elon game, except even more so, um, you know, there's a premium price that is paid for this game, and just like when we played on Friday night in Chapel Hill. No doubt it's 50, like I told you, in SeatGeek, it was uh, $56 all the way up to 257 for the premium seats. So if it was not a big deal, they wouldn't be able to sell the tickets that high. But moving along, I know that we want to uh, keep it going. Great win for the Pirates, as you said, and uh, number nine this week for a reason. Going three to one, not only three and one, but you have, uh, you know, we talked about NC State, but I don't think FAU is not trying to, like, lift them up or give coach speak or whatever. But I don't think people giving them enough credit. I thought they were much better than advertised, and a lot of people, you know, just because it's FAU. But if you look at it, one point I want to make tonight, Bubba, if you look on that wall, you know, look, watching the game, look how many regionals they've been a part of. I mean, they've been a part of a lot of regionals, so it's not like they have no tradition and we're kind of playing down to them. No, they actually are um, a good program. They've got good culture. And, hey, I don't know about you, but, you know, people were talking about the conditions of the field or whatever. Um, for the weekend, I'll, I'll t it was it was a little chilly this weekend. I'll take a Boca Raton. No, I mean, I'm not saying I don't want, you know, to be at Clark or Claire. I'd much rather be at Clark or Claire. But as far as the, the climate is concerned, uh, I would love to be at Boca Raton this weekend. If I didn't have my my kids, I would have been there. Oh, absolutely. Um, what, low to mid-80s? I yeah. believe I saw in the box score. Exactly. That's, certainly what you, that's certainly what you would expect. And, and I was talking to Scott, better known as Scooter Rogers, earlier this afternoon and just asking him about his setup under the tent. And uh, and I'll read a funny you – know, I'll kind of maybe paraphrase a funny text message um, from Scooter here a couple hours ago just saying – you know, unfortunately, unable to come on the show tonight due to his Little League obligations uh, there on Elm Street. But uh, Scott was laughing, just saying, he said, man, it was so unprofessional, just under a tent, you know, fans getting up. Or, you know, he was in the middle of calling Jacob Jenkins Cowart's home run on Friday, and a fan stands up in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and, and so I'm sure I'm, I told him I'm gonna have to go back and listen to that call because obviously I was watching on ESPN plus and then um, and he just said it was, it was unreal and um, just the angle of the sun uh, I guess it was yesterday's game he said he got sunburned <laughs> yeah it was I, I did on uh, Alexander had I gotta wear my speaking of my pgx uh, <laughs> gloves.com I had I should have worn that on Saturday. I got sunburned, and right here on my nose, if you're looking at that, like all around here, man, um, huge mistake. I won't make that mistake. I mean, you always take it for granted. It was, it was like 61 for the high, so you don't think about you, but that's when you can get burned the worst um, and some clouds, but uh, overcast. But anyway, uh, great win. Uh, we talked about Tuesday night. Now, uh, people can say what they want to. We'll talk about Saturday's game. But I'll tell you one thing, um, Trey Savage for Friday, wow. What was it, seven scoreless innings? Off the yeah, top take, of taking a look at Friday's game, Pirates win 4-1, to one, just 10 hits combined between the two teams, 4-5 and, and uh, 0 for ECU, 1-5 and 4. Um, again, 4 for Florida Atlantic, and that was a – had certain – excuse me, certainly had something to do with the outcome, um, but in the, as well as obviously the Pirates playing air-free baseball on Friday, which unfortunately was not the case on Saturday and Sunday. But uh, a big blow in this one was JJC's you know, three run, excuse me, two-run shot, and then he also had a sack fly for that third RBI. And like you said, Trey Savage was terrific. Seven innings uh, in seven innings. Trey surrendered no runs, um, three hits, 11 Ks, and two walks. 
So uh, another unbelievable performance, um, you know, what we've come to expect from Trey Savage. Yeah, in fact, he is uh, on – he was a pitcher, the offensive player of the week, right, for the AAC. Um, I believe that's right off the top. And I know that Carter – I, I had not seen that, but um, – it would not surprise me if he was AAC Pitcher of the Week with that type yeah. of performance. And uh, we'll talk here in just a few minutes. And then as far as our PGXGloves.com Pitcher of the Week, Trey was certainly one of the candidates, you know, as was um, Jake Hunter, Aaron Groller. Um, and, you know, you also had a, some excellent relief outings and two saves by Wyatt Lunsford Shinkman. No doubt. And uh, I tell you, um, I'm, you know, I know people are, when you're watching the game and you're in the game, like as a fan, you get upset when things happen, right? But if you look at the big picture, you know, coach, um, I know coach always talks about the coach who clear said it, which is something I always say about baseball. It's a marathon, not a sprint. He talks about that all the time. And you and I both, and there's thousands of pirate fans that we want to win every single game, but they, I think we have a better chance of winning a lottery than to have the Pirates go undefeated in a baseball season. But um, that was just talking about the probability. Yes, it's possible. And yes, we want it to happen. But we know we're going to be losing games. The key is not losing a whole bunch of games. And uh, like in a row or like losing series, uh, we're, we're doing okay. And, you know, we have the – everybody wants to talk about UTSA. But, hey, um, you know, losing a series is going to happen. Um, but that's why you need to – capitalize we're talking about only all these games coming up uh we'll be talking about that in a little bit but that's why we have to do that is that um there's no place like home and we got a huge home stand coming on the road and then we'll have another huge home standing a uh, home stand coming up at the very end of the season but i know with fau another good thing bubba with our rpi is it like eight i heard this morning i believe it's eight. i believe it's eight or nine i honestly have not checked i saw some talk about that in our uh, mega text and then also on social media yeah. and uh, i believe it was johnny robertson surprise surprise johnny stats uh, chiming in with oh, that oh, and uh, that news that the, the pirates were ninth in the, the rpi and uh, you know while we're on polls i know you mentioned we we rose to ninth in d1 baseball and and thanks to Ed ECU Baseball, the official yeah. X account of the, the Pirates uh, on the diamond. And you have, there you see, ninth and D1 baseball tents in the NCBWA poll, which is the Baseball Writers Association, 11th in the USA Today Coaches poll, 12th in Baseball America, and 13th in Perfect Game. Yeah, what, what I want everybody to realize is that we say that it doesn't matter, which is true, ultimately. But guess what? Um, right now, they have us projected as a national seed, a national seed. So what we have to do, just keep winning, baby. However, you know, people are talking about ugly wins. Let, let me tell you something. We ha what's great about this team is they haven't, they have not hit their ceiling. They haven't met their mark yet. And guess what? We're not playing our best baseball, but we're still winning. And we're finding different ways to win. We have different guys stepping up. So um, for me, uh, yes, you know, you're talking about Friday. And then Saturday's game is uh, disappointing because uh, we had that game in hand. But how many times have we seen our team, no matter if what sport it is for ECU, they have the lead and they it happens, you know. It's not something we're, like, making excuses for, but we're just simply saying that, um, instead of for everybody getting upset and being the panic room, the pirate panic room, we need to realize sometimes that's going to happen. Hope, hopefully it won't happen a lot. Yeah, before we um, talk about Saturday a little bit more, uh, you have uh, yeah, Justin Butch chiming in. I, I don't think you referenced this, Dave, but we were discussing as far as NC State and um, that potential traveling series with, with the Wolfpack. And Justin said, he believes that was 2020, that that was discussed. And then, let's see, he also said, afternoon, guys, 20 to 5 ball game today. I'm wore out. Justin, was that JV? Was that a JV high school game? Let us know. And uh, if so, you know, how many walks and hit batters did you have? 
And then you have Chuck Sae chiming in. Appreciate you, Chuck. What's he up, said Chuck? eighteen of the pi- eighteen of the Pirates remaining twenty five. Uh, games are at the friendly confines of Clark LeClaire Stadium. ECU, of course, 23 and 7 now, 6 and 3 in the American. 25 remaining games, 18 of those at home. And um, with the five game week, he's saying uh, need to use other pitchers other than White Lunsford Shinkman and, and Danny Beal. Shinkman. White not- Lunsford Shinkman. Yeah, Shinkman and then um, Jake Hunter. And th- th- those two were unavailable until the weekend. Uh, tomorrow, Jaden Winter, uh, you know, the very talented right-hander that runs it up there in the mid-90s, uh, he gets the ball. Uh, and then to be determined for Old Dominion on Wednesday, you know, fingers crossed that we can get both of these games in. And um, you're yeah, we're good on. You know, also going to see the likes, the likes of D'Lo and um, some, some arms that we haven't seen a whole lot of, at least not in a while. Yeah, Bob. I'm sorry. I was, it was a little a little bit of a lag. I was simply going to say, for here, I know in uh, Greenville, and it looks like that uh, we're good for both the midweek games. It, the only day I know it's supposed to rain, like maybe 45, 50 percent, is on Thursday. So we'll keep our fingers crossed that that's true. But I haven't seen. I'll look again, but I haven't seen any rain until Thursday. And then the weekend is supposed to be nice. So if we can just Get by Thursday. Make sure you put the tarp on the field. <laughs> and Thursday, um, it sh- everything should be okay. That says, of, you know how weather is. We're talking on a Monday night. You know how that goes. But as of right now, as recording this show on Monday night um, in the 7 o'clock hour, that's the latest I've heard. And Chuck also went on to chime in and say, it's so hard to go to Omaha. Someday we'll catch a break. You know, undoubtedly, uh, it's it's extremely challenging. That goes without saying. And you know, down through the years, I think you know part of this has just been you know, kind of the luck or unluck of the draw, if you will. And also, the region that the Pirates are in. You know, you think back to 2004, and the Pirates were very deserving of a national seed, much like yep. they were. I guess it was 2019 when. Yep. Um, Coach Godwin has referenced this on multiple occasions, just saying there's in, in uh, I think back in 2022, when we did end up getting the national seed, when it wasn't expected and you know, Cliff said, you know, back three years ago, I thought if we didn't get one with our body of work that season, what do we have to do? Are we ever going to be able to get one? And, you know, we, we got one in 2022. We were definitely deserving, um, with that 20 game win streak or, you know, just shy of 20 games, I guess at the time, maybe about 18 games, but, but that was, uh, that was nice to, to get rewarded after you think about some of the teams where you should have gotten a national seed and you didn't Um, in 2004, if you get a national seed, you don't have to go down to to Columbia to play the Gamecocks at, at Sarge Fry. And you had, you had, multiple Gamecock fans came up to me that weekend saying, Hey, you guys have a unbelievable team. We shouldn't have been playing you until Omaha. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, it, uh, what was that stat? I heard it was like something like 80% of whoever hosts the super regional goes to Omaha. It was something ridiculous way up there. 60%, I think for uh, regionals, but Johnny is a stats guy. You're the stats guy. And speaking of stats for Johnny stats, FAU Saturday Sunday com- combined attendance. Get this, Bubba, nine hundred and seventy-one folks. The Pirates Saturday Sunday attendance for a five and eleven Columbia team was eight thousand nine hundred and nineteen. How about that? So that just tells you right there how much we're um, we love our Pirates. And in fact, he said probably two hundred of those nine hundred seventy-one were Pirate fans, no doubt, Johnny. And like I said. If my kids were not here and I were a bachelor, I'd be really tempted to drive down there because I love uh, baseball. I love my Pirates, and it would have been prettier weather than we had here in uh, eastern North Carolina. Um, By the way, uh, you saw that too, Bubba. Johnny Gardner mentions tomorrow, tomorrow night at 5 o'clock, our very own Lady Pirates, the softball team, is taking on number one Duke this week. 
In fact, uh, I believe it's going to be the second time in school history um, that our softball team in modern era, uh, bef- while they've been keeping up with it, um, Alabama, I think it was 2007 or 2009, um, we played Alabama at home being a number one team. Uh, kudos to Shane Winkler, by the way, Bubba. Uh, I know we're talking pirate baseball, but excellent job. They already have surpassed their win total for uh, 2023, 28 wins on the season. They swept uh, They swept UTSA. They came back. They were down 3 nothing and had a walk-off uh, yesterday, 4-3. to uh, Hate that I couldn't be there, but obviously um, Alex has baseball practice. So we stayed home, or if not, the kids wanted to go really bad to that softball game. Yeah, you won a game in the midweek. I want to say it was Campbell. You know, help me out here, Johnny Gardner. Uh, I believe it was Campbell. Um, but we won a game handily in the midweek, and then we won you know, at least final scores um, you know, relatively easily in the first two games against UTSA before, like you said, battling back to sweep the Roadrunners in that series. And uh, now, like you mentioned, I knew we were either 28 or 29 and 11 and six and nine, six and nine in the, the conference, but, but, but six and three uh, after getting swept on the first two weekends uh, by North Texas and Wichita State. So, and for we're Pirate playing. fans that are unaware, it's not like, the, it's not like these wins have come against uh, a bunch of nobodies in the league because Look at we, we took two out of three for, for, from a ranked Charlotte team at Max Joyner Stadium, and then we went down to FAU, won one out of three, but were very competitive in the other two where you yep. could have very easily won that series against a ranked Florida Atlantic team. Uh, and then not sure what UTSA's record was coming in, but we nonetheless we took care of business against the Roadrunners, uh, sweeping them. Uh, and have now won six out of our last nine in league play um, and three and three against ranked teams. Yeah, by the way, you were correct. We played on uh, – I knew it was at Campbell because it's uh, Flow Softball. You know, you had to purchase Flow, the Flow Network, and that's why I couldn't see the game on uh, – I knew you were correct on that. I double-checked, but I knew you were right uh, because the Flow Network, um, if I had extra money and maybe down the line I will – um, then I can, they purchased flow, but, uh, had to lay off a of flow <laughs> because I believe off the top of my head it's $30 a month. And I just feel like if that were my school, you know, if it's Campbell, Elon, whatever, uh, Wilmington, then I would buy it. But since it's not my school and it's only a handful of games, um, this year I elected not to do that. But anyway, uh, congratulations to Shane Winkler, uh, man building He This is should be his what Bubba third school that he's rebuilt the program, um, a rebuild. He's been successful at two other schools off the top of my head. I believe that's right. And this will be the third school, but he's got seven transfers. Um, shout out to our good friends, by the way, on ESPN plus Patrick Johnson and uh, Courtney Layton. They do a great job. And um, I'm watching baseball and I've got baseball and softball. I was switching some of it. I've watched baseball on the big screen, some of it on my phone, but I was doing it back and forth, so that way, um, love both programs and uh, want to give some love to Shane Winkler and company. And I tell you what, um, Apple and all them, you know, the great pitcher. Um, uh, hey, uh, the struggled early on, but the most important part, they got the win. And um, you know, it'd be nice. We always talk about Omaha. Um, it's more down the road than baseball, but you know, we we're talking to another coach uh, that coached here and uh, asked her about Oklahoma City. Uh, maybe one day. We could yeah, I, I didn't hear the end of that comment. Uh, last thing I heard was Oklahoma City. Yeah, I said maybe one day we get there. I said it's not as close as baseball yeah. is, but I really like our, what right. I'm saying. Is the future is bright for softball. Right. Um, much like uh, you know, James Madison, that, that program was oh, able yeah. to – to get to the, the Women's College World Series, and we definitely have that potential. And, and that's one thing, you know, Shane Winkler, you know, has stuck with his plan, and we've continued to show progress. In, in year one, you saw some, saw some progress. Um, 
took a lot of lumps at the same time, you know, but were improved over the previous year. And, um, and then the following year, you win the majority of your non-conference games. And then this year, you're, you're dominating your non-conference games and even more competitive in the conference, which is the step you needed to see in addition to taking care of business out of the league. You wanted to uh, be much, much more competitive in the American, and, and we're doing just that. But kind of bringing things back to baseball, and um, before, before we start uh, talking more about that Saturday game against the Owls, um, Johnny Robertson said that Columbia team that we referenced when we were talking about some of the attendance figures, um, the Lions have now won 10 out of their last 11 since playing ECU. So great for us from an RPI standpoint. And uh, we really felt like that would be the case. They were picked uh, to contend in the Ivy League, um, picked second in the preseason. And then uh, Chuck Sia once again chiming in saying on YouTube, um, Pirates, I believe, are ranked in the top 15 in attendance um, I would certainly think so. Uh, I think, Chuck, that we were 12th a year ago, something like that. Um, he's saying LSU, LSU um, not surprisingly, is number one. Yeah, and uh, not to get off topic because uh, we want to talk about other games and uh, I've got something to talk about at the very end. Uh, but that's certainly correct. I mean, Chuck, when you see the – you can ask uh, Chip Welch, who obviously went to East Carolina and uh, the sports information director of the SID – he, uh, he always lets me know the attendance when I'm in there, and it's just amazing. We talk about that all the time, about how proud we are of the program and how we proud we are of Kyle Barber. He made he made the show. Uh, he's backstage. and um, What's up, Kyle from LaGrange? What's going on, guys? I uh, had uh, taken a little nap here and woke up and realized that the uh, show was on the air, so I uh, thought I might want to join. We appreciate you. Yeah, we were just talking about the uh, – Chuck was talking about on YouTube about uh, – he said that we're ranked top 15 in baseball attendance, LSU number one. So that's what uh, we were talking about as you were coming in uh, backstage. Yeah, well, you know, we're always in the top uh, 20 in attendance. I would imagine top 10 sometimes uh, behind probably all SEC and ACC, maybe Big 12 schools. But – um uh yeah no um, we uh always have great attendance and should be proud of that no doubt and bubba did you have anything else for friday or do you want to move on to saturday and then that way bubba... yeah we, we kind of shifted over talking about saturday's game right. and what a frustrating game that was the pirates out hit florida atlantic 14 to 6 um yeah. but but because of um the inability to get some clutch hits uh, left 11 on made a couple of errors and, you know, you, you gave up a long ball uh, there in the first few innings. You know, those things um, combined allow you to – or cost you um, the opportunity to win a game that you, that you really should have won and, and out hitting the opposition by eight. Yeah, that's a game that we, you know, we wish that we could have back, but um, we don't. And so – you know, it is what it is. Hey, uh, by the way, Kyle, Chuck says, Kyle, the man, the myth, the legend. So Chuck is saying hello Pre to you. Appreciate, appreciate that, Chuck. And we're just trying to, what we're uh, doing this week, we have five games. So uh, coming up uh, this week, obviously, uh, you have Elon, Old Dominion, and uh, Charlotte. So we'll be talking about that. and. Uh, all the 10 straight games coming up. Uh, 18 out of the last 25, Kyle, are at home. Thanks to Chuck. I appreciate him mentioning that earlier. So uh, a big home stand for the most part, the second half of the season. And um, Bubba, I know with um, we're frustrated about Saturday's game, but overall we go three and one. Uh, the, all those are road games. So anytime you can win three out of four on the road, the Roy, Road Warriors, Kyle, they give you a little wrestling reference. Um, then hey, we can we can have fun and enjoy it and be number nine in the country. Yeah, um, get good performance on the road for the most part. Nice performance last Tuesday every state. Took care of business two out of three on the road. Um, uh, we were talking about Saturday. Uh, 
you know, you out hit the opponent that much. It's sick and not to come away with the win. Um, would have made Sunday not such a must win situation, but hats off to the guys for bouncing back Sunday, and we'll get into that um, in a back and forth ball game. But we wouldn't have been in a situation where we had to win that one had we uh, not um, taken care of business on Saturday. But you know what? It's baseball, and um, we found a way to get two out of three on the road. It w- would have been a disaster, in my opinion, had we lost that series after losing the UTSA series and started off in a pretty deep hole in conference. But now, um, as Chuck pointed out, 18 out of the last, what was it, 25 at home. Yeah. So um, a lot of chance there to uh, take care of business in and out of conference and, and position ourselves to host a regional. Well, think about these numbers from the Florida Atlantic series. And we talk about out hitting them in game two on Saturday, 14 of six for the series. The Pirates had 29 hits, just 16 hits in the series for Florida Atlantic. Five on Friday, six on Saturday, and five on Sunday. But the Pirates, we not had a weekend series with more than three airs. We had five, and all five of those, you know, came on Saturday and Sunday after playing air free on Friday. Um, our first two games of the year, you know, where we had had, where we had multi air games, um, in consecutive games, uh, rather, and um, we, to our credit, despite clearly not being at our best, you know, being down Jacob Starling, uh, having to shift around things with the infield, um, Colby Wallace and Chaz Myers being asked to step up. Um, we found a way to get it done despite, um, you know, probably overall what probably having about our B minus or, or C plus game as far as um, just – we that's so atypical to com, commit five errors on a weekend. The only thing, only week we'd had anything like this week was the UNC Wilmington and Columbia week. I think in those four games we had six E's, uh, three against the Seahawks in that game. We're, um, I won't say fortunate to win, but a, a ugly win nonetheless, as Coach Godwin reiterated um, against the Seahawks down in Wilmington. But you know, you have to win when you're not at your best and to, to find a way to win two out of three in Boca, um, despite five E's, uh, way too many free passes on the mound and way too many runners left on base at times. Um, we, we found a way to get it done and uh, we'll be better because of it. No question, because you're going to look at you're going to have games uh, coming up. In postseason, we're that very thing where we're not playing our best and we're going to have to figure it out and just like life. So absolutely, I, I'm really happy about this team. And uh, by the way, Kyle heard this morning uh, on social media and uh, in our group chat that we're number eight in RPI. So RPI is up. Uh, we have that at eight. We have right now number nine. I've heard that we're um, the projections are that we're going to be a national seed, the number eight seed overall. Uh, we'll see how that plays out, but uh, our fans just need to relax. Everything will be fine, and um, this is a huge week, though, as Kyle will say. We've got five games at home, Kyle. Yeah, I mean, the opportunity is there to do everything we want to do. Um, you can't go commit that kind of error, uh, that kind of commit those kinds of errors in conference play and uh, expect to get where you want to get, be a national seed or even host. So uh, I'm going to have to clean that up this week. Um, like you say, five at home, you got Elon, you got ODU, and then more importantly, you got three against Charlotte this weekend. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, that that's where we really need to make sure we take care of business. You want to win them all five, but um, the three this weekend are most important. We we, we really need you, – you, you, you take two out of three, but we really need to sweep Charlotte, not only because it's a, a conference series and, you know, you, you, you want to make up ground and over UTSA and, you know – hopefully step out in first place in conference by sweeping Charlotte. Plus, you know, we owe Charlotte um, as an athletic department. <laughs> they they yes. beat us in football. They beat us in basketball. So for God's sake, can we kick their ass in baseball? <laughs> I knew you were going to bring, I was waiting for that, Kyle, if you were going to be on the show. Uh, thank you for making me laugh. That That's absolutely correct. And I'll tell you one thing, uh, 
whether we want it to be a rivalry or not, I, this series is huge for us. And like you said, hey, having the spring game on Saturday, walk the, watch the spring game. And even if you don't have tickets, get tickets in the jungle and have that place rocking because it's going to be a great atmosphere. I can't wait. Um, but this weekend is going to be insane. So make sure that you uh, check it out. Yeah, it'll be a heck of an environment. Uh, I feel certain. You know, here's uh, hoping for excellent weather. <clears throat> you got the football game. Yep. And um, I believe that's what's what. It's one. Is, is that? I think it's one to two. Basically, it's it's typically not much more than an hour, hour and fifteen right. minutes. And then, and then, and, and, then you, and then you got the baseball game at four. Daniel Hill says, Daniel here, senior on Facebook says it's going to be insane on Saturday. Great move to have the spring football game right before. Absolutely, Daniel. That's what I'm talking about. All our great fans, y'all are awesome. Uh, let's have a big tailgate. Go to the spring game. Walk across. Maybe tailgate some more. And then go to the game, have that jungle rocking and that whole uh, stadium rocking because it's going to be um, that kind of atmosphere is what's going to make uh, make us. And I think uh, it's going to be electric on Saturday. And who knows, maybe for the whole series. Forecast this Saturday uh, for, for the weather, uh, for the spring game and the baseball. 70s, right? Uh, yeah, high of 71 so, and sunny. In fact, uh, sunny all weekend uh, for the baseball yep. series, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And it may get up to about 80 degrees on Sunday. And by the way, uh, Kyle is telling Bubba, and then we'll get to Sunday's game. Sorry, Bubba, we're off track there. Um, but the only – you're the staff meteorologist. The only day that I've seen that has potential rain is Thursday, right, as as we're recording this? Yeah, I didn't even notice that. I was paying attention to the weekend. But no, uh, according to the forecast, no rain for uh, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. So that's what matters. Well, we do have two midweek games. Yeah, the so, Tuesday uh, is a good Wednesday point. Be okay. So. I'll double check, but that's what I, I've seen. But I'll double check. I haven't looked at it uh, real close today. Um, I had to. Uh, work yeah, hard according, today. according to the uh, according to my app, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday it's going to be cloudy, but the rain, as of right now, is uh, for Thursday only. Okay, so just put the tarp on Thursday. Play the games Tuesday, Wednesday. Tarp on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We're going to rock that place. We're going to rock Charlotte, and wish Matt could make it. I know Chase has a lot of uh, his son. A lot of travel ball games in Connecticut, or he would be here. But a lot of people I'm talking to is coming to the spring game and uh, baseball. A lot of my friends like you guys, so we'll see how it turns out. Uh, let's talk about uh, Bubba. Let's talk about yesterday and the the rubber match, if you will, down in Boca Raton with FAU. Uh, started out, man, I tell you what, uh, Ethan Norby, uh, tough outing. He didn't make it very long at all uh, to start the game, right? Well, you know, you know, maybe it wasn't his best outing, but some tough luck for Ethan because he didn't pitch that poorly. And you know, I think it was there in the third. He you know, ran into some tough luck there. Um, I think it was, it was after – I don't think. I know it was after there were two outs in the inning. So uh, <clears throat> you had two out damage for the Owls. But um, on the whole, he didn't pitch all that badly. Uh, at all and we went up we went with a went with him again i i thought we probably would after the way he pitched last week but uh you know fortunately after digging that three to nothing deficit the pirates score eight unanswered and you really did a lot um there in the middle innings but then you know after not doing Anything in the first two went quiet in the late innings and had to hold on for dear life. Fortunately, Wyatt Lunsford Shinkman came on and picked up his second save of the series. No doubt. And, uh, you know, uh, we'd said earlier, by the way, Kyle, that uh, both Jake Hunter and Wyatt Lunf Lunsford Shinkman is going to be unavailable until the weekend because of uh, their work yesterday. But, man, we needed them. And, uh, Great to take up the series. We win the series. Uh, we, we held on to a victory for eight to six. And then uh, tomorrow and then Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, man, we need it rocking, as I've said that many times, but we really do. And uh, Clark, Yeah, I, I'm not a fan of, of, of two midweek games. Um, uh, you know, I, particularly with a series like Charlotte coming up, but 
I know you got to do it um, every now and then. You're going to play two instead of one in the midweek. It's just, you know, how, how it falls to get the right amount of games in. So uh, I'm not a huge fan of that, particularly with Charlotte coming up this coming weekend. But it is what it is. At least we get them both at home. And then without the schedule right in front of me, I know we'll have at least one more five-game week, if not more than one, uh, because the VCU ran out. That game got rescheduled for what was a four-game week. You'll have VCU, yep. Duke, and uh, I'm trying to remember who it is that weekend. But, yeah, I got um, you right. Yeah, have that five-game five game, five game week. Yeah, so you have uh, what it'll be is – Maybe uh, have, Wichita State uh, or – South Florida, South Florida, South Florida. Then, yeah, uh, during the weekend of the third through fifth, and you have Tuesday. That's a huge one. The Duke uh, hosting that game, and then you have uh, the uh, as Bubba talked about. Instead of having two games, you're only going to make up one of those games for VCU. The other one was canceled, and that's May the eighth. And then, um, then you have that Tulane series. Uh, I know others. We've talked about it. Man, that's a big, busy, busy week. But like you said, Bubba, and we have. Um, 11 out of 12 games coming up, or uh, I believe I counted that right, or at home um, for between now and now and then over the next 12 games. Yeah, I believe that's correct. But um, taking a look at our pgxgloves.com pitcher and players of the week, um, we'll start off with our player of the week. Um, Carl Cunningham was a candidate. You had J Dubs, Wilcox, and candidate. Um, Mong, another one or two. J Dub was, I think, six out of 17. He had four extra base hits, a pair of home runs, a pair of doubles. Uh, but well, we ended up going with, after some, some discussion and uh, you know, also talking with the voice of the Pirates on Scott Rogers, you know, we, our consensus. Amongst the team was Carter Cunningham, eight for 19, a home run, a double, five runs batted in, five runs scored, another tremendous week for Carter Cunningham. Congratulations to him on being the PGXGloves.com Player of the Week. And our PGXGloves.com Pitcher of the Week is none other than Rowan County native Jake Hunter. You, you very easily could have gone with Trey Savage, as we referenced earlier. Many folks probably would have, but we thought, <clears throat> thought uh, Jake was very deserving because you, know, you were, I think the game was, I'm pretty sure we were trailing at the time. Um, three yeah, three to nothing when Jake entered. He went four and a third. No hit baseball, did allow one run um, because of a walk or some, some walks, but, um, one run it was earned on not a single hit four strikeouts and three walks for Jake Hunter. So congratulations to Jake on picking up the win and relief and allowing the pirates uh, to get out of Boca with a series win. You're talking about Carter Cunningham guys, by the way, it was announced today from the conference. He was on the honor roll, uh, for the, Offensive player of the week, if you will, uh, the player of the week. He actually was mentioned. So a great weekend for him and uh, outstanding pick there are picks rather uh, for PGXGloves.com. And, you know, uh, guys, while we have a moment, I know that uh, we're running out of time, but I just want to mention I'm really happy. If you haven't had a chance, guys, go to TeamBoneyard.org and they've got a whole bunch of really cool things on their spring auction uh, going on between now and Sunday, uh, excuse me, Saturday. Uh, Kyle, are you going to get anything there? Uh, maybe dinner with John Gilbert or they have uh, Mike. You can do uh, dinner with uh, Houston or Gilbert or Mike Schwartz or Kim McNeil and even Cliff Godwin. Uh, no, I'm not, not planning on it, but I encourage everybody else that wants to spend that money or has that money to spend to go do so. Um, I'd like, uh, you know, I'd, I'd would enjoy having Gilbert or uh, dinner with Gilbert, have a nice long conversation. Um, but uh, no, I'm not planning on betting on any of those items. I need to check and see if there's any uh, any memorabilia, anything like that that I'd be interested in. I don't, I don't know what they have all hats. Is. 
they have hats. Uh, the hats are oh, wow. up to like two hundred, two hundred fifteen dollars. Uh, they For have a hat. Yes, sir. The uh, does the hat do anything? The twenty three club hat. Well, I mean, that's I'm, I'm glad that money is going to Team Boneyard. Uh, yep. <laughs> the department. No, I, well, I, I don't uh, think I'll be betting on anything to be honest with you. Uh, well, they do have. You would like the. Uh, I do. You would like the uh, basketball and footballs. They have autograph, but I don't know if you're willing to pay for those. But they're actually um, they're autograph uh, from ten team boneyard football athletes, uh, and that's uh, right now they have seven bits, two hundred and five dollars, and they've got another one for uh, the same thing for one hundred and eighty dollars. So there's two footballs, uh, and there's two basketballs and two footballs. No, nice. yeah. no, it's great. For, it's great for um for Team Boneyard. Obviously, you got to raise money for NIL, and um so uh, good idea to have the auction. And I uh, hope everybody that can afford to participate participates. They even and then, as film. far as some of those gifts, Dave, you know, obviously, you know, if you're if you're spending a hundred, two hundred, three hundred bucks, if you're going to donate that to Team Boneyard anyway, you know, why not get why not get a hat? Or you know, foot, right. you know, whatever the gift may be in return, like that offensive film session or the defensive film session is two hundred dollars. Um, you got that with uh, Blake Harrell and John David Baker. Um, I think it would just be cool that that that's what I'm thinking about. I'm just thinking it'll be cool because Bubba's right. I'd probably give that money anyway to him, but it'd be kind of a cool experience, especially with a new offensive coordinator. Um, I don't know about you, Kyle, but I would kind of like to be in the room and just hear his philosophy. I know I'm not trying to be too deep about it, but sure. Uh, cool. JDB, um, obviously new offense, um, great offense of mine. Be interested to see what we're running. Um, so to, uh, to, to particularly for the offensive side of the ball and, you know, Blake Harrell, obviously we know what we got with him. Um, uh, but it still be cool to be in a film session with him. But yeah, those are, uh, yeah. And, and certainly, um, I give the team ball yard. Um, I'm, you and know, I'm kind of at my giving limit right now, but, uh, yeah, for, the, for those that were, are going to get, you know, if, if you can give more, give more. And if you can get something out of it, great. And, uh, those are some, some cool things to do and experience. And those film sessions are actually, yeah. in my opinion, uh, those are pretty decent deals, 200 bucks for, uh, yeah. to, to, to be in a film session. Uh, that sounds like, uh, actually uh, pretty fun. I got one for you, Kyle. This is actually Kyle's. I'll put some money on it for you too, Kyle. Behind the scenes tour of football facilities. Uh, they have four of them. And the current bid I'm only seeing is $100. So you get to go behind the scenes, the locker room, and different stuff. So that, okay. I mean, that's that, cool. I mean, bucks. I mean, that, that's, that's, that's cool. I, you know, um, I, the football facilities are, I, I mean, these are all cool things. I really don't know what to say about them. I'm, it's great. I'm, let's write some money. Just look at them on teamboneyard.org. I want everybody to go there. Even if even if you say, Dave, I'm not going to give a dollar, that's fine. Just look and see what they're doing because that's exactly what we need to be doing um, to raise the money for NIL. Um, and, there, and I would like to see it for some more. I'm sure they will. Uh, this is just for the spring, again, going on through now uh, to s a Saturday. But I want to remind you, I'm sure they'll do summer, fall. I imagine they'll do it once. Uh, and by the way, um, this is one of the ones I want, Josh. So thank you. He said, uh, he made the uh, Parker bird hats and he's working on getting more. Thank you, Josh, because I want one of those hats. I don't know about you guys, but I want one of those Parker bird hats. He's going to be playing for the Newburn South Pauls this summer, the college summer league. So, um, I can't wait to catch a game there. No pun intended. Um, in Newburn this summer to watch him play. Um, and I'm sure I can watch him in Edenton as well. Um, but looking forward to watching him and obviously going to everybody's favorite team, the Greenville Yard Gnomes. So <laughs> I hope there's a pirate or two that are playing for for them. Yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, but a lot of a lot of baseball to be played before uh, summer league ball. Hopefully the boys but, uh, will be playing uh, well into uh, late June. Absolutely. Hopefully they have a late start to <laughs> uh, catch them up, pick up a player or two later. Uh, guys, I uh, want to remind, speaking of um, that, I want to remind everybody about pgxgloves.com. Kyle, I've got it after the show right now. I'm going to get on there and I'm going to get on there and I'm going to check it out because we're going to have a lot of fun uh, for sure. pgxgloves.com. I've got to go there and get uh, the baseball gloves and some gloves for. Um, 
I've got to get my for that for my, for Alex and McKenzie. They have uh, baseball and softball this season, the next couple months. Uh yeah, no doubt. PGXGloves.com for all your glove needs for sporting events from baseball to softball to football, if you're golf, whatever. Uh, PGXGloves.com will hook you up. Go to PGXGloves.com, order yourself something, put in promo code ECU at checkout, and say, what is it, 25%? That sounds right. I can't remember all the top man. Is it twenty or twenty five? You'll save some money. Put in promo code yeah. ECU. And then, as Johnny Robertson mentioned early in the show, he said, "I've been wearing my." Thank you. He's Can we been wearing his Thank you. Sorry, uh, going through a drive through as you can tell here for. Yes, but, uh, but but as Johnny said, uh, I've been wearing my PGX gloves for softball. And uh, I appreciate him purchasing something uh, through through causes. Uh, Mark Minikazi, that is. Longtime Pirate fans will remember when he played third base for the Pirates back on that 2004 regional or super regional team, rather, uh, that we referenced here just a few minutes ago. But uh, definitely, you know, give them a look. Uh, I know my nephew Lance and his uh, travel team, when they placed a bulk order, they were. They were pleased with the product. No doubt. My kids have had, uh, I buy them every year, but they really hold up nicely. And uh, by the way, Kyle, we need to get you a pgxgloves.com. The hat, the hats are really cool. Um, I think you would like them. I've enjoyed mine and uh, no doubt. All right. So do you guys have anything before we go? Not a thing. Uh, looking forward to a Pirates going 5 another this week. Yeah, just um, hopefully, you know, another solid week. Take care of business at home and um, and keep pace um, in the in the conference standings. I believe we're uh, one game back of the Roadrunners. I think they're seven and two. Uh, Wichita State struggled over the weekend. Uh, pretty sure they were swept. And um, you know, if we play the way we can play no reason to think we can't win a or we, we know we can uh, win a fifth straight conference title one more thing guys i forgot to mention i just checked and um it was over the weekend 45 or 50 percent for thursday try 83 percent in greenville uh 83 percent chance of rain so please put the tarp on uh, looks like tuesday wednesday friday saturday and sunday we're good and um we'll have the tarp on the field on thursday so everything's fine We'll get all five games in. And uh, also one other note as far as these midweek games are concerned, if you've tuned in in the last 15 or 20 minutes, Jaden Winter, uh, <clears throat> flamethrowing right-hander, you know, they're up there and pitches in the you know, 93, 94 range and you know, can probably even get it up to 95 or 96. Um uh, Definitely has had some success this year. Also, you know, had some bumps in the road, um, mostly early in the season. Has not pitched in the last couple weeks, I don't believe. Uh, so nice to see him get the ball tomorrow, and uh, you know, hopefully he'll have a solid start against Elon. Yeah, that's going to be a great game, and uh, we need everybody out there. Uh, we have Pirates playing baseball against Elon, and right across the parking lot. There at Max Joyner Stadium, we have e ECU, Kyle, hosting the number one team in the nation, the Duke Blue Devils, the softball team. They haven't had a softball team for many years, uh, but number one in the nation, the second time in the modern era. It may have been more times, but as far as as long as they've been keeping the records, second time in school history uh, that we have a number one team that we're hosting. So good luck to Shane Winkler's team. And again, our hats off to him. Great season so far. And uh, let's keep our fingers crossed. They can finish strong, uh, no doubt about it. All right, thanks to Kyle. Appreciate you, buddy. Uh, thanks to Bubba for putting everything together behind the scenes. And we do the show every single week as we wrap up and look ahead to the Pirate Baseball. It's our great show, Extra Innings, brought to you by our good friends, again, at pgxgloves.com. See you. Good luck to the Pirates. That concludes this week's edition of Extra Innings, presented by pgxgloves.com on the Sports Objective. 
Join us again next Sunday night as we will again talk East Carolina Pirate Baseball. Be sure to follow the Sports Objective on social media. It can be found at the Sports OBJ on X, at the Sports Objective on Instagram and TikTok. Like and follow the show on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. When you subscribe, be sure to click the notification bell and all so you're alerted on your device anytime we go live or upload new content. As always, we appreciate you watching and listening to the show. Go Pirates!